I have a family who has been always attached to textiles. The father of my grandfather was a tailor. My grandfather was a tailor, and my father works in fashion. For them, what I do is a bit strange to understand because I don't make fabrics, I don't sell them, I don't make costumes out of it. So to explain them that what I try to do is just to keep the ones that did it before in good conditions, uh, for them is difficult to understand. When I started, there, there was not a profession really as a fashion conservator. It is more something that you gain uh, with uh, experience and years. But of course, previously you have to study conservation. Fashion has been always attached to the story. If you see the paintings, in every painting there is a woman or a man wearing a fashion that was trend in that time. Nowadays, uh, through the contemporary fashion designers, you can see many, many references that were already created many years ago. That means that is already everything invented? I don't think so. But what is true is that if you want to uh, make something new, you have to learn something from before. Of course, everything is connected. You cannot detach one from the other. One of the most important uh, conservation treatments that we do basically all the time is dye. Uh, dye is a very complex process. In order to keep and save time, uh, what uh, I have done uh, those last years is to build my own color library. Here are all of the ones that are based in green and blue. Then, yeah, we have also orange, red, this was a scarlet with brown in a 100 milliliter bath, then 20 minutes, then the, the concentration of ammonium sulfate, also the concentration of acetic acid, and then, yeah, the pH. So it varies very much, only changing one component from the formula. This is really, really my treasure. You cannot buy those colors because the fabrics has been suffered uh, very much transformations through the years. That is the original fabric. So as you see, it's very important to match the original color of the fabric. Then you have unity and not two different parts. This one is totally modified. So it is positive and negative because then you can also tell about the story of the dress. So through the study of the dresses, you can also know about the woman or the person who used to warn them. The UV lamp is very handy for us because uh, it is a sort of non-destructive uh, technique. The trick of the UV lamp is that some materials uh, have a special reflectance. It is a sort of clue to guide you where the deterioration process or the degradation process is going. What we can see is all the little stitches that were hand stitched to the dress. So those are the joints between the Batista cotton and the lace. And the reflection under the UV light, you see the very white sharp edges. Those are corresponding to the original stitch from the designer. All those seams are also handmade. All those seams as well. So, so delicate. This cost hours and hours of work. Everybody who has worked for the same dress, their main goal was to keep that material for future. It is not who has the right choice, it's more to what is the best for the dress. Uh, you want that the dress flies? Okay, but how we are gonna make that the dress fly in good and safe conditions? 
it is always to try to find a balance between that. It's not to say, oh no, the dress is not going to be washed. It is not that. It's also to find, okay, how we can make that possible in a way that we don't destroy the original dress. With the costume for Energin, um, I have the chance to be surrounded by very wise uh, people, professionals, uh, that are all of them linked to my field. Uh, of course, what I do is uh, fashion conservation, that is totally other subject, but everything is connected. You have the chance to learn very much from the materials, from the techniques, uh, from the story of every item, and especially from the story of Holland and the tradition of collecting uh, creating and keeping the story intact. Mm -hmm.